finished up our sprocket alignment measurement and uh, now it's time to take on the dreaded cam timing. So I'm trying to think of a way we can do this video in which we can address the novice engine builder who's never done this before. For you guys who are professionals and have done cam timing before and understand this whole thing, then uh, this is probably going to be pretty boring for you. So we're just going to try to focus on the step-by-step -step nature of cam timing on one of these early engines. And hopefully that uh, clears up a lot of, you know, a gray area of misunderstanding or uh, some daunting thoughts that you might have about taking this on. It's really not that bad. The other thing I want to do is I want to take this, uh, this stage that we're in here and just use it as an opportunity to talk briefly on spark plugs. That's why I've just kind of waited until this stage to show you what we're going to be in for if we haven't checked and verified some spark plug things uh, before we get this far. Because if you get this far and you got an issue with spark plugs, it really is the point of no return. It's going to be very painful down the road if you've got stripped threads, you need to do some helicoil work, um, or you shoot a spark plug. And that happens all the time. So let's get started first by having a look at the spark plugs. And I'll tell you what my, my thoughts are, my concerns there. We'll clear the air on that. And then we'll go ahead and dive in into our cam timing. So my basic concern is with engines this age, you've got aluminum heads, you've got steel spark plugs. Uh, almost always, is in, in my experience, that you will have compromised threads in your aluminum heads, whether it be water-cooled, air-cooled. It doesn't really matter what kind of engine you have. Um, you have a lot better chance if you have cast iron heads, but in aluminum, it's always a problem. Um, if you haven't checked your spark plug threads before you get this far, uh, let's say you haven't done helicoil work, this is something that could backfire on you down the road, because if you have to fix this problem from this distance, this is going to be very difficult to do on an engine of this design. So it's always a good idea to bench verify that your spark plugs will thread in and start correctly with your fingers. Seat all the way down. They'll be able to take the torque and back out and, and do that two or three times to make sure that you're not going to have a problem when you get to this stage. If you cross thread something here at this distance, it's going to be very difficult to sort out at this stage. Okay, so that's my FYI for spark plug awareness and uh, cross-threading. Let's go ahead and get started on our cam timing. Okay, so our starting point is going to be lining up our Z1 mark, which we have already verified. We want to be right down center of that case and right on the money. Um, on my camshaft, it says 911 at the top here, and then we got some part numbers on the bottom. So this is going to be important to remember because we're going to cover that up. We won't be able to see that again. For reference. We're going to line this guy up on our Woodruff key. So on the left side our sprocket dish will face out on the right side. The flat side will face out. Idler. Then installing our Tomsky chain tensioners, these are mechanical tensioners. be tight enough. Okay, so now we kind of got everything into place. We just want to go back, double check we're on TDC. And then while we're on TDC without our crank moving, we just want to make sure we're sort of in the ballpark with our camshafts. 
uh, at 90 degrees here before we put our pin in there. That'll help us get us within range without being too far out to begin with. All right, and then once we feel pretty good about our TDC and then our camshaft being fairly upright to 90 degrees, we're gonna find the hole that this dowel will fit in. That's gonna be the one there. And then the same on this side, we need just a slight adjustment. This is just eyeballing it for now. Let me see if I can give you a better shot of what's happening here with the sprocket behind our front sprocket. So you can see everything is just offset in the way that's designed, which is actually pretty ingenious. The dowel is only going to fit in one hole. So we just need to find that hole. No matter what our combination, there is going to be a hole. That's the one right there. And just hand tight for now should be fine. Okay, and then next we're going to install our number one rocker and rocker shaft. I'm just going to blow through this and set this up so we can keep moving. I'm going to explain the rocker setup and valve lash through our rotations uh, on a future video. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and quickly get this one set up and we'll keep right. moving. Rocker's in place, valve lash is adjusted. Right. Next, we'll be putting our Stomsky version of the Z1 block in place. Tighten that down. This is the SRO98. And I've got two of them and they work fantastic. All right, now we're going to insert our digital gauge. This has got the long foot screwed into the end there. Go ahead and turn that on just for the sake of seeing how it works. We can zero it out. Um, and as we plunge up and down, that's how we're going to get our reading. And it has a stop in there as to how far down it will go. And I'm going to have it facing the direction where I can read it. So once we're all the way down and like it, we can set the set screw on that and then zero it out. Okay, so we're all staged now and ready to go. We have spark plugs removed. We have our Z1 mark at TDC. Number one rocker is adjusted uh, with valve flash on our uh, intake valve on number one cylinder. Um, the large nuts are hand tight for now with the dowel pins inserted behind and uh, also you can see here you can't see our woodruff keys anymore uh, for a reference marker so what I've done is I uh, painted a white dot on the top of our camshafts and put some black electrical tape on our uh, crank pulley there just to kind of give you a, a general feel for what's going on as we rotate uh, without a definite marker you can get lost in the confusion as to how many rotations uh, things have done in relation to our valve overlap um, and we don't want to lose track of that so uh, for every 360 degrees we have on our crankshaft we're getting 180 degrees on our camshaft so that's important to just follow along and that'll keep you where you need to be while you're tracking your valve overlap so let's go ahead and rotate this guy we're going to try uh, to set up between 4.2 and 4.6 that's our range uh, we'll try and set right in the middle there to get started with we're going to have a little bit of a lash adjustment to deal with on our dowel pin there when we torque down. So we'll have to consider that when we place our dowel. But 4.3, somewhere in there, is our range. Here we go. Okay, so at 4.35 millimeters valve overlap, you can see we're not quite on TDC. So what we have to do now is we have to loosen that nut. We're going to pull that pin out. We're going to rotate our crankshaft back to the Z1 mark, right where it needs to be, without moving our 4.35 overlap on our camshaft, and repin it, and hopefully that should get us where we need to be.
Okay, the important thing to remember is when we pull this pin, we have tension on this chain, which is going to make us lose our alignment. So let's get the tension off, pull that out of there, and somewhat at the range. I'm going to rotate back to our Z1 mark. That when we relax, it gets us in our proper range. So right there is 4.25. The lash is leaning against that pin now. So hopefully, when we torque this down, we don't get too far out of that range. And then uh, reference in Wayne's book on the torque. So apparently they had a torque change recommendation on the large nuts for their earlier engines. Um, so we're going to take that new value to either 110 foot-pounds or 150 newton meters. So we're going to torque it down to that spec and recheck our measurement. Okay, so then for rechecking, we're back on our Z1 mark, we're retorqued, we're zeroed out, our cams are facing up, so we are on the back side of the cam lobe. Let's rotate that one more time and see if we get a new measurement. Okay, so I've rotated this a few times um, because I'm coming up with between 4.29 and 4.3, uh, but I'm coming up with 4.29 more times and I'm coming up with 4.3 so there's a little deflection in there um, I just can't seem to eliminate so I'm fairly confident our measurement we need to uh, try and match on the other side is going to be closer to this let's uh, let's roll through the other side and see if we can't get that to match up okay so then fast forwarding to the right side um, I've gone ahead and set up our right rocker valve lash put our gauge in we're zeroed out here and uh, ready to go. And note the position of our camshaft here for this rocker adjustment. We're 180 degrees out at TDC on uh, number four. Okay, so after playing with our dowel pin uh, and some various holes here, we're at TDC with our Z1 mark and the sprocket tension is leaning on this side of the dowel pin um, and that's the tightest measurement I can get out of it in any combination. If I move it one more either way I come way off that mark um, not even close to our other side so that's about as much as we're going to get as far as uh, matching up the other side but I think by the time we torque this down and get a little more tension on there we might be able to pull it in a little bit tighter. Let's go ahead and torque that and see what we end up with. Okay, so then uh, the same thing that's happening on this side as on the other side. So we've reset everything, we've re-zeroed out, torqued down uh, the large nut, rotated, and I'm coming up with between 4.30 and 4.31, but I'm coming up with 4.31 more times than 4.30, so I'm pretty sure that's our measurement on this side. In either case, uh, we're very close uh, left or right here. I don't know how we're going to get it any tighter than that. Um, definitely be happy to run with that. So let's go ahead and reset this one more time and you can see for yourself and that's the beauty of running two gauges. You can check the left side and right side at the same time and feel fairly confident you're exactly where you need to be. I hope I haven't confused you any on our cam timing video. The um, whole objective of this was really just to kind of simplify and go straight to the uh, actual process step by step. Uh, another thing here guys, um, if you're novice and you haven't done this before, um, this is my first cam timing on a Porsche engine and uh, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, having two gauges set up here as many times as I've gone around this thing over and over, um, it really gives me the confidence that I'm where I need to be. Um, I can't just take it for granted when you're doing engine building. You really can't take anything for granted. 
Also, I want to uh, give a big shout out to uh, Stephen Stomsky. Uh, man, I tell you what, his tooling and uh, going through cam timing with all his tools just sure makes this a breeze. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank <laughs> you.